I came from an area called Valtellina in Lombardia. It's very north, almost on the Swiss border, very close to the Swiss border. I was nine when I came here with my family. The reason my family came was that my father was already here, having left immediately before the Second World War broke out because he didn't want to go to the army. And he had a sister in Western Australia, so he decided to settle there. Uh, my memory of Italy is wonderful. It's very clear because at nine I'd been to s kindergarten, school, so I have a very clear memory of friends and lifestyle, and it was magical. Also, the fascinating part was that I left in deep snow in February, end of January, early February 1950. And when I arrived in Fremantle, it was scorching hot. So the contrast was very dramatic. The actual trip through the Suez Canal was fascinating, it was my first international trip in fact was I'd only been to Milano before that so it was a great adventure and I think as it happens with children moving around like that is a great adventure and seeing my father for the first time was quite magical. The language of course was a difficult thing because I didn't have any and we moved very quickly to from Perth to Bullfinch an out-of-the-way country place Western mining was about to restart mining gold there. And when I arrived, there were only five children in the school. And the teacher said, Carla Zampati, we can't pronounce any of that. He said, what's your second name? I said, Maria. He said, we'll call you Mary. So I was called Mary for about 20 years. My memory, early memories of Australia was this sense of adventure, excitement being a new country with new people, I found it really exciting. And because I was one of five children only, I was treated rather specially. I was not discriminated against. I was really regarded as a bit of a, a, a talking point. So it was kind of fun until I started speaking English, which was about a month later. And then with a strong Italian accent, and the kids, of course, teased me unmercifully, which meant that I stopped speaking for about two months, but came, it came back. I went back to speaking English very quickly to the point that I gave my parents a really hard time because I wanted them to speak English. My father could, but my mother couldn't. Eventually, at the age of 17, I realized that if I didn't stop, rejecting Italian, I'd forget it completely. So I started speaking Italian again. My passion for fashion came from Italy. My mother went to the dressmakers when I was about six and took me with her. And I just found the atmosphere in that workroom absolutely magical. Beautiful fabrics draped over dummies and just, just people creating beautiful things. I said to my mother, when I grow up, that's what I want to be, a sarta. So designing, fashion designers, for me, was uh, totally out of uh, the question because that was too far, going too far. So, but this country, of course, allows you to, to go as far as you want, as long as you work hard and as long as you, you have the will and the talent to push along. I'm very grateful to my father that he insisted on us coming here because I think it really did make a difference to my life. I don't think it would have been as easy for me to be a designer in Italy. There's perhaps too much competition. I started making clothes at the age of 10, 12. And by the age of 15, I had organized an incredible wardrobe. And whatever I wore in the street, people would stop me and say, where did you buy that? Because there was a great shortage of fashion in Australia. I um, came to, for a holiday to Melbourne from Perth with a friend for about six months. And on the way back, I came through Sydney and I then decided, I fell in love with this city. I then decided when I go back, I'm just going to just, you know, eventually come back to Sydney because I could see that fashion wouldn't be easy to do in Perth. 
about a year later, I came back to per from Perth to Sydney. That was 64. I worked for a company as a receptionist. But then I lived in Darling Point, and on the way home, there was a, a gentleman, who, he, he was Czech, Mr. Newman. I sat next to him on a bus, and he said, I'm looking for a PA, do you know anyone? And I said, what kind of business are you in? He said, fashion, which immediately raised my interest and I immediately applied and he gave me the job, which was wonderful. Worked for him for nine months and his collection absolutely changed as a result of my input. And um, I decided after nine months, I was being paid very little money that I would leave. I gave him the option of giving me a massive pay increase, which I knew he wouldn't. And then I, I and so I decided to leave, use my well-earned savings to set up a, a business at home, making samples and rushing around with the samples, selling them, etc. So for a, about two years, I ran my business completely single-handed. It was very, very tiring but it was fantastic, very rewarding. In the end, it was fantastically exciting. And I think anyone who has started a business has that experience, that you learn to work harder than you ever thought you could. But, it's, um, but I think making your own decisions, having your own companies is a great, great privilege. I can still work today, you see. My personal highlights are children, three of them. So with all, each of my children, they're very special, intelligent, driven, which is good because I think you have to be driven to, to get anywhere. My highlight in my career was probably in 1980, I won the Businesswoman of the Year award that was uh, given to me by Qantas and the Bulletin magazine. The Bulletin was like BRW. I was overwhelmed the fact that I was given it because I didn't think I ran such a good business, but apparently I was. I made an impression and that experience was amazing. Not only did it give me access to other women in business, which was fabulous, but also it raised the attention of Ford Motor Company who were looking for a designer for their laser a designer input for their laser car, which was selling very much to women. And they wanted some kind of input from a woman to make it more desirable. Anyway, I went to Ford Motor Company down in Melbourne and we designed, with their team, we just redesigned the laser completely, so much so that it sold like hot cakes. And two years later, we did another series, which was, that possibly was the great, greatest highlight and probably the best thing that happened to my brand because what it did is it enabled me to be known broadly, not only in fashion, but just in every other area. That was in 81. And in 85 was when we launched the car, 86 was the following one. Then from there on, I was asked to go on the board of um, Migration Advisory Board, which was really interesting. I can remember Warren Hogan, who was um, the Dean of Economics in Sydney University saying, I don't know why we bother with any other migrants. The Italians are the best because they, you know, they, they have good family, they work hard, they are successful. They're the least unemployed people. Why don't we just get more Italian? By which time, of course, that time, Italians were quite doing quite well in Italy, so fewer and fewer were coming. I was on the board of uh, Westfield for 12 years. It was run so well, and I learned from that. But I, my business was also well run. It was not too different with the way that Westfield was run, except they had a few more zeros in the balance sheet. When I was asked to go on the board of SBS, I hesitated because I thought I know nothing about broadcasting. After six weeks, I was told, you better make up your mind. I was told by my son, who knew someone in the prime minister's office, better make up your mind, mum, because they're not going to wait forever. And he said, 
gave me confidence. He said, look, you're a newcomer, you appreciate his, the reason for SBS, and you run a good business, why not? So I did, and that was also very, very interesting. All of these experiences have been fabulous, and I've been very privileged to, to have them. Being given um, an award by the Italian government, the first one, which was Cavaliere, which was really very special, and subsequently a Comandatore, which was amazing. And I, I'm very proud Italian, because I think, like every other Italian in Australia, and my little grandchildren all want to be Italian. They all want to go to Italy. They all want to play soccer. My children all have learned Italian and the little ones are now learning Italian. Not from me. It's mine is not good enough. I was going to relearn Italian when I retired, but I haven't retired yet, so I haven't had time. Buonasera, salute!